Hello everyone, this is Ethan from Mecha Warehouse, and today I'm going to be customizing the entry grade RX-78 that I made in one of my past beginning builder videos, and I'm going to be doing this with Gaia Paints. And these are all of the pieces. I did hit them with a uh, Evo Surfacer first to make sure that the paint actually stuck to them, but we're just going to get right into the actual airbrushing part of the video. And what I did is after the surfacer, I did a light gray underneath and then a white on top, trying to give it more of like that shadowy feel to it. And once I was done with the paint, I actually just put it right back into the Gaia bottle since it was thinned and ready to go and I like the consistency of it. For anything of the inner frame or the backpack hands as well, I used the gunmetal from Gaia Paints. I really enjoyed this color. It went on super evenly. And you can see there, it just coats it immediately. I didn't even have to do a second coat on a lot of these, just little touch-ups here and there. But even with that backpack, it is completely covered. And I just went through anything inner frame or connecting for mobility joints, things like that, I covered in the gunmetal. And as you can see, I did the fist there too, and the fist looks absolutely fantastic. Now I moved on to the primary metallic red. I used the primary metallic red, yellow, and blue on this build for the RX-78. And as you can see here, I think I may have thinned it a little bit too much as it's pooling around the edges of the shield, but I just wanted to make sure I got everything coated as evenly as possible and I could go in for a second and or third coat if needed. You can see right here, I think that's three coats of the red and it's super bright and it shines through. I really like it. And even on the shield, I think this is also the third coat. You can see here at the end that it really does come out nice and even and I love the finished product of it. Now between each spraying uh, of colors, I was cleaning it out just with some isopropyl alcohol in between and then I would also run some water through it. But we now move on to the yellow and the yellow actually went on very smoothly, just kind of like the uh, the gunmetal, I guess I got the thinning right down, but it covers it really nicely, which I was kind of concerned about since yellow is kind of like the lighter of the colors, but it went on really smoothly, really nicely, and I really like the shine that it gave to it. And of course the star, the most important part, like I said, that shield. And then we go on to the metallic blue. Now I had a bit of a harder time with this one. It took a while. You can even see here when I'm spraying, not a lot is coming out. I think I just thinned it way too much. There's even some pooling on the next piece if you see in the corner. Yeah, so right on that bottom right there, you can kind of see the pooling there. It created a weird little effect on it on the final piece, but it isn't that noticeable. I was able to cover it up with some more of the paint, but this is the final painting product. You see, I used everything just on the, the sticks and stuck them into styrofoam, but I separated them all out for ease of assembly. So now it was time to whip out the instructions for the second time around and start building. So the first thing that I noticed in the process of putting it back together is number one, if you cover things in paint and some of these have multiple layers, at least one layer of surface and one layer of paint, some of these even have three layers of paint, um, the pieces are not going to go together very smoothly. As you can see here on the chest piece, I had to really press these in to even get it remotely close. And in the finest product, you can, you can really see that it isn't 100% together. I was thinking about gluing them, maybe using some cement, uh, the, the really quick drying light cement from Tamiya, but I just decided against it because I didn't really want to ruin the build. I didn't know how it would react with the paint, but I put in the shoulder joints as well as the backpack and the two, I don't actually know what they're called, I guess little antennas that turn into the beam saber handles and that makes the chest. Moving on now to the arms, uh, these were pretty self-explanatory. They went together easily. They weren't as hard as the head or the chest area, but still there were some difficulties. I found that I didn't separate all the pieces correctly at the first time, but I mean, it's the arms of an entry grade. They were pretty easy put together. That slid right in there. This was the only hard piece right here. You really had to force it in there to get it in just because there is so much paint in that area. But you can see I did get it in and then that is the finished waste. 
still has good movement on it. You can really pose it, the skirt, as much as you want, but I don't want to mess with it. Now onto the legs. Snap those into place. I did make the feet off camera because I was having some trouble getting it in the right way and I didn't want to mess around with it on camera, but the legs came out really nice too. They have a great finish to them as well. I was really happy with how even the paint job is. There are some spots that I miss with the paint job, but I think for a first time I actually did a pretty good job. And so now here I am assembling the Gundam, putting the legs, the waist, the chest, and both arms, as well as the head. So one of the big things that I feel like I messed up on was the fact that I did not sand the joints that much when I really should have. This thing's posability is practically zero. It barely moves. You can see that the only pose I really have it in is the straight on. The head moves, but that's about it. But now it's time to assemble the shield, which once again was my favorite part of the build, even though it is probably the simplest part. Um, that main red part of the shield, it took me forever to actually get it into the surrounding white part just because I was so much paint. I actually ended up having to sand the underneath part of the red part of the shield, but final product came out great. I love the shine. It looks great. And there is the RX-78 with its shield ready to get some details put in on it. So for this, I just used some cotton swabs and a cap of water, and I am going to be using the HD The Origin RX-78 to Delpy decals. Uh, they were just some that we had in the warehouse, and I thought that these would go better. Obviously, there isn't any entry-grade decals to go with the kit, so I just decided to grab these and try to make it work. Also, thank you to whoever put up the manual of this kit so I could actually use the sticker guide. First things first, I'm going to use the hobby knife that I got to cut out the RX-7802. I then submerge that in water for anywhere from 15 to 30 seconds and take it out so that it's nice and wet and it comes right off of the paper. And as you see here, I just use the Q-tip to apply it to the body of the Gundam. And then I'll just mess around with the placement of it until I really like where it is. And then I will take the Q-tip and rub it around a little bit just to make sure it is set. I didn't use any mark softener or setter for this. Maybe I should have, but I didn't think of it until the very end. And at that point, I was already going through. But as you can see here, this is all just placing decals that I got. This is only my second time doing decals. Um, I got a lot of courage to do them from doing that one video with Nick of the Argama deck where we're putting these big decals on. Watching Nick do it, it made me feel like I could do it. There was some difficulty that I got right there. You can see that the decal kept sticking to my tweezers and it would be impossible to get it off. But eventually I got it off and I just used the hobby knife to move it around as well as the Q-tips to get it into position where I wanted it to stay. With that one, I even ended up changing the final position of it. And then it was time for the EFSF logo to go right up on its shoulder. You can see here I had some trouble trying to grab them. And I did mess up a little bit with this one where I, I fiddled with it too much to the point that it scraped off a little bit of the logo. It's not too much, but I think right there is where it happened. As you can see as I wipe away. There's a little bit, especially in the F, that's missing. Now, I also wanted to put some decals on the shield. So, I only showed one in this video, but I think I put on a couple different ones that mirrored each other. I didn't want to go crazy with the decals on this, as it is an entry grade. It doesn't have a ton of detail on it, so I thought it would be weird to just cover it in decals. But, I wanted to just give it that nice minimalist feel while also making it feel like it is real and came from this world. And as you can see there, that's the finished shield. I have six decals on it and I think it looks really nice. Now I did have to go back in with that primary metallic red paint. And I did that using the Brushwork Semi Pro Brush Pack from God Hand because they have these two very fine tip uh, points that I was using for the decals as well as some of the cleanup. So right up there, you can see that I was missing some red on the top of his head from when I took it apart. And I cleaned it right up and I got rid of those red marks as well. I just didn't do it on camera. 
I then thought it would be cool for the backpack to have this cool little red tint to it on the bottom. So as you can see there, I'm pretty much just leaving the paint in the reservoir that's already built in, and then I'm taking the other brush and then just letting it absorb the paint away from it so that it kind of has that cool little circle, and then I just went and did it for the other one as well. And I thought it gave a really cool look to it. Now, I wasn't sure what to do for the panel liner, so I ended up using this Vallejo Mecha Color Pure Black just for some of the panel lining, per se. I was using these same god hand brushes for this as well. These worked fantastic. I would not have had a brush that would have gotten into these small areas without them. But you can see here, I'm just trying to be super careful. Anything that I messed up or mushed around, I would just go back in with some water and clean it up. And then I just went and got some of the black in the face for that little bit of panel lining in the face. That really makes it pop. I then just took a paper towel and absorbed whatever I didn't want in there. And that's it. So let's go on to the finished product. Thank you so much for watching this video. I put a ton of work into this. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like as it does help out the channel. If you want to see more content like this, please leave a comment below letting me know what you liked about it, what you didn't, what you want me to change, and what you think about my build. But that's it for me now. I'll see you next time.